Hey everyone, I've been playing Zelda Breath of the Wild lately, and I really wanted to recreate the Sheikah Slate and the Magnesis Rune ability. I thought it would be fun to share it with all of you and do a Let's Create on it. The Magnesis Rune ability, it allows you to pick up objects from a distance and move them in a really smooth manner. It allows you to create various ramps, bridges, and access maybe chests and move boulders that you couldn't move otherwise. It's a really great mechanic for puzzles, and I hope you all enjoy going through it. If you're new to these videos, make sure to visit the description. I have a project that you can use to uh, work alongside me. So you don't have to create a new project, you just simply download the one I have linked, open the project, and you can follow along straight away. Welcome to section one. In this section, we're going to be setting up the project. Let's start with the maps. We're going to duplicate the default map and call this the link underscore map. Open up the link map and navigate to your blueprints folder, characters, and let's use the third person character this time around. We're going to duplicate it and call this BP underscore link. And just to make sure everything's working, drag link in the scene, hit play, and you will see in the right, in the world outliner, that BP underscore link is um, in the world. Next up, we've got to make some props. Before we make our prop, um, we actually need something to represent the object that we're going to move. For this, I would like to have a sphere and a cube. So we need to make two static meshes. Let's drag in the cube and let's drag in the sphere. On the cube, we're going to right click and convert this cube to a static mesh. Go to art and we're going to create a new folder. Let's call this art props and have that highlighted. This one will be SM underscore cube. Uh, SM stands for static mesh. And we're going to do the same process for our sphere. So we can convert sphere to static mesh, navigate to that folder. And this will be the SM underscore sphere. The other thing we need to do is to make sure that they have collision enabled because without collision, we cannot simulate physics. So let's just double check. So if we go into our art props and double click the cube, we can click on collision and it is not displaying any collision at the moment. So let's add a simple box collider, navigate to the sphere, check the collision simple. Uh, let's add a sphere collision and it's there, it's just very faint, and that's it. Now, when they simulate physics, they won't fall through the world. So we can now delete these from the scene and we can begin setting up our props. So we are only going to need one prop and that's going to be the physics master. And the reason we have a physics master is because we want to use inheritance in this project. Let me demonstrate and explain this at the same time. So let's create a new blueprint class, an actor, and this will be the BP underscore physics pickup master. Now it's called pickup master because we're going to be picking up objects using the magnesis rune ability. Uh, open this up and the way we're going to be picking up objects is using something called a physics handle. Now to make this really easy for us, we're just going to use one class and make a bunch of other our blueprints based off this simple class, this one blueprint. And this one blueprint is what you have open in front of you, the physics pickup master. To demonstrate this, let's just simply uh, duplicate it, uh, not duplicate, create a child blueprint. This is going to be a child of the master. And let's call this BP underscore boulder uh, pickup. So we've got our boulder pickup and we've got our pickup master and you will see it has inherited the scene root. If we were to add a component, a static mesh, let's compile that. The boulder will now inherit a, a static mesh. And this is really great because we can just create as many children of the pickup master as we want and we can use it to represent different objects. We can represent, um, uh, boulders as we have here, spears, uh, crates, many different chests, many different types of objects. So if we were to go ahead and create another child, 
and this would be BP underscore, uh, let's do, let's just go for cube now, cube pickup. We are going to go to the static mesh and assign the SM cube. We're going to go to the boulder and we're going to assign the SM sphere. And if you have a look, if I was to drag the boulder into the scene and then the cube, you will see that they are both different. They both inherit from inherit from the pickup master, but they are both different. And the great thing about this setup is that I can add anything to the blueprints. I can add anything to these static meshes. So if I want them to simulate physics, I can, um, if I go and hit uh, simulate physics, the boulder will now simulate physics. And so will the cube pickup. And if I was to hit play, now they got physics on them. And we can just create as many of these as we like. With that set up, we can simply reference the master for everything in blueprints. We don't have to reference individual um, blueprints. This is the power of inheritance. Instead of duplicating your code, or in this case, our visual scripting, our blueprints, instead of duplicating all the nodes continuously and setting up different cases, user cases for every single uh, physics object in the game, we just have one physics object that everything inherits from. We are now in section two, and in this section, we are going to check for physics objects. To do this, we're going to be using line traces, and we're going to be checking whether or not we can uh, see and interact with a physics pickup object. All of this is going to be inside of Link. So let's open up Link. And before we go ahead and write any uh, nodes, we're going to add two components. So in the viewport, we need to add a physics handle. And this physics handle is going to enable us to pick up objects and move them around with realistic physics. As you can see over here, we can change a few variables and this is going to affect how it feels to move objects. In Breath of the Wild, you can move objects with magnesis and they feel heavy, like they have weight. This is what all of the, if you see the linear, uh, linear properties, the angular properties and the interpolation speed, these properties will allow you to give objects a certain type of weight when you move them. And that gives a whole lot to the simulation which is really useful. The last thing we need to set up is to add a scene component. And in the scene component, we're going to call this the uh, component move uh, pickup location. And this is the location that we're going to pick up the physics objects from. Now we're going to set this manually in the event graph. So don't worry too much about where you have this placed. To start off, we need to get an input, and then we can begin checking to see if we can interact with objects. So we press a button and then we activate the magnet, uh, magnesis rune. So the button we're going to use is the left shift button. And then we are going to create a variable, which is going to be for our physics object. Our physics object is the object that we want to pick up. So it's going to be the object that we do a line trace to, and it's going to be uh, one of these objects. So if a line from our character to this box hits, and we press left shift, and then we left click, it will be the physics object. So let's actually uh, set this. So this physics object is going to be a primitive, uh, primitive component. And the reason why it needs to be a primitive component is because of how the physics handle works. The physics handle isn't going to take an actor, it's going to take a component. So let's drag this in. And we want to make sure that when you are pressing this, you are not currently holding an object. It would be really awkward in Breath of the Wild if you were holding an object, you were to press the magnesis room button again, and you could pick up another one. It would look really glitched and weird. We don't want that, so we want to make sure that this is valid. And what this is like, it's kind of like a condition. So if this is not null, meaning it's not empty, it is valid. If it is empty, it means we're not currently holding anything. We're not using our ability. 
So we only want to uh, go through with this if we are not using our ability. In this case, we're going to use something really cool. It's called a flip-flop. And basically it just goes between A and B. So when I press A, it will, when I press shift, it will be A. And when I press shift again, it will be B. To demonstrate this, let's do a print string. And let's do another print string. We can call this uh, picking up object. And this one can be um, actually checking for object. No longer checking. So what will happen is when we press shift once, it will go to A, we press shift again, we'll go to B. So as it is not valid because physics object is currently empty, let's have a look at how this works. So let's hit play. We press shift, checking for object, no longer checking. And this is a really great feature, flip flop. It's, you can use this for a lot of things. If you think about like a light switch, you can switch it on and off really easily just using something like flip flop. Now that we know this is working, we can go from here and add a timeline. And this is going to be our loop magnesis rune. Uh, the reason we need to loop it is because we need to continuously check whilst our shifter was pressed, if there's an object around us. And then when we are no longer uh, pressing shift, we want to stop. So, we press shift once and it will check for the runes continuously shooting a line trace. And when we press shift, it will go to B, which will mean it will stop. We sim if you double click, we just need to make it loop, compile and save. And now with that, we can create our first function in here. So let's go into functions and we will call this activate magnesis rune. Uh, and this is like in Zelda, when you press the button to activate the rune, it starts checking for physics objects. So we are going to be checking using a line trace by channel, which is just going to be a line from the camera, which will have a start and end point. The camera we're using is our follow camera. We're going to get the world location and this will act as the start point. We are then going to uh, get the forward vector because we want to make sure that the line trace will go from where we're looking forward. We don't want it to go left to right, up or down. We want it to go directly forward where the camera is looking, where the player expects um, to be able to pick up the objects from. So we're going to times this by a float. And this is how far we want to be able to pick objects away from the distance. So if you want, we can call this the uh, magnesis distance. And let's just give this a float and plug this in. So get, plug that in there and let's set it to something. Make sure you compile. So 1000 should be good for now. And you can increase or decrease this depending on how far you want it to go. If you want to make this a bit easier, you can make it public and or display, I should say. And you can just adjust it over here when you click on link in the default. Now that we have this, we simply just uh, plus the vector by a vector, and this will give us the endpoint, the end location. We can then comment this, uh, get direction of line trace, and we can debug for one frame if you like, which will just show us uh, the line trace going out. Now that we have it going forward, what we want to do is break the hit response. So break hit result. And that'll give us access to all these properties. Now we can make sure that we've actually hit something. And after we hit something, we can get the hit actor and cast to BP underscore physics pickup master. So if we go with the pickup master, if we hit the pickup master, it will register for its children. And this is what I meant before, where it will register all children, child objects, which is really powerful. Once we know that we've hit the pickup master, we need to assign the uh, physics object. So let's set that. And the physics object is going to be set to the hit component. The reason why I made this, if you see here, a primitive, a primitive component object reference. And the reason I knew that 
is because if you go to the hit component, it is also a primitive component uh, object reference. That allows me to know what variable to set. I didn't just know this off by heart. I knew it by uh, simply highlighting and checking. So I can do that there. Now, uh, there is one other thing. We need to make sure that uh, when we're not uh, using this anymore, that, oh, sorry, I should say, we need to make sure that when we hit the object, we set set this, but when we are no longer hitting it, um, it sets it to null. If we don't set this to null and you uh, press left click, it will continue dragging around the physics object. And we can test this out later if you like. So let's actually just set this now ahead of time. So uh, if we don't hit anything, it should be false. It should be nothing. It should be null. So set the value to nothing, which is what null is. And over here, we're going to uh, set physics object. That is the importance of all this. And just to uh, make sure this is working, we can grab the uh, magnesis rune, check it into update. And once we've gotten that, we can print a string and we can print the name of the object that we have uh, hit. So we'll get the display name. So let's test this out. So we just press uh, shift and we've got the cube. Uh, press shift again, and it's no longer checking. Press shift, it's checking for object. Shift, we've got the boulder, cube, boulder, cube. And that's why we're doing the timeline so we can update it just like in uh, Zelda. Press shift again, and it's no longer checking. We are now going to move on to our, our third section. And this third section is going to be all about uh, picking up the physics object. So we're checking for it. Now we're going to pick it up. Before we do that, let's actually uh, comment this. This will be the activate check for physics object. Oh, by the way, um, I like to put capitals because that's how I used to program in C Sharp. Feel free to comment any way you like. I remember someone wrote a comment kind of mocking me for this, but that's my style. So do whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, next up, we have the picking up a physics object. So to pick it up, we're going to get the uh, left mouse. That's just the input that I'm going to be using. We're going to use a sequence. And when we, when we left click, we actually want to stop it from uh, we want to stop it from checking. So when we left click, we need to go into flip-flop. So we press shift and it goes to A, it's checking. We press shift, it goes to B, it stops. In the next user case, we press shift and it checks. We left click to pick up the object and it stops checking, which is going to stop this from looping. If we don't stop it from looping, it's still going to be casting the line trace, which can be expensive, of course. And also uh, it can make a bunch of glitches and bugs, which we really do not want to deal with. After we've done this, we want to make sure that the physics object is valid. And if you remember from up there, it's a good way just to check that we are actually holding a physics object without having to make a separate Boolean. We don't have to make a Boolean and go, um, is object picked up? Which is really nice, keeps everything clean. Uh, over here, let's just comment this. Uh, pick up physics object. And over here, we're going to begin. So let's grab the, uh, where did we put it? The component pickup location. Let's then set the world location. And if it's valid, we're going to set the world location to the physics object world location. So it's going to sit exactly inside of the physics object. And I will explain why we're using this uh, more towards the end, but it gives it a location to kind of attach to, which you'll see in a moment. Um, the next thing we want to do is grab the physics handle because we need to use it in order to grab components, whoops, grab 
component at location with rotation. So we don't want to just grab the uh, component and set the location. We also want to set uh, rotation. The component is the physics object. As you can see, it will not work with an actor. And the location, that is going to be the uh, component pickup location. So let's get well location and plug this directly into location. The rotation will be the same thing, get world rotation. And I'm going to show you how this works like this. We actually need to modify this later, but I, I would like to show you how to, kind of how to solve certain uh, features and bugs that you may come across. I think that's really valuable. So now that we have this, we can press C, set up grabbed object. So this uh, grab location component allocation, it's going to uh, kind of attach it to the uh, physics handle. It's going to tell the physics handle, hey, I want you to grab this object. And in order to continuously grab it and move it, we actually need to use something called set target location. So we've grabbed it. Now we just need to tell this grabbed component where exactly to move. So this is the initial setup. What we're going to do now is go into a timeline because in order to, uh, we'll just call this a loop set target location. In order to uh, set the target location properly, it needs to be done in real time. And to do this in real time, we can use another loop of the timeline. We can then grab the physics handle again, set target location, and rotation, hit uh, update, and the new location and the rotation is of course going to be the exact same as this. So let's copy that and paste it. Let's plug that in there and plug this in here. We're going to comment this again. So just highlight it, press C, and we are going to call this the set physics object location. Then, uh, we're going to, actually, we should test this out. There is a bit more to write, but I believe we should test this out first just to make sure it's all working. So let's go in here. We press uh, shift, left click, and we move the object. There we go. Now we can't let go of it. <laughs> so what we need to do is add that functionality in. And you'll also realize that it doesn't feel 100% right, but we will be fixing that momentarily. The next thing we need to do is actually stop it from being picked up. So let's get the right mouse button. We're going to, of course, check if this is valid once, uh, once more. The reason why we always want to check it with an input is because there is no point in executing all of the nodes or the code if it is not if it does not exist. So if it does exist, we're going to release components. And what this does is it drops it. So here we have grab component and then we're setting its location. This is actually just going to completely drop it. But keep in mind, it's not going to get rid of the physics object. It's just, it's just going to drop the object from the physics handle. So once you've uh, dropped it, we actually need to set the, set the physics object to null, which is just leaving it empty. And then we can uh, stop this from looping and we can just comment this uh, stop magnesis and we can just compile and save uh, hit play so shift left click right click drop shift left click right click drop and we've got it working we've got our our basic system here and now what we can do is refine this a bit so let me show you what i mean by um the object not acting properly let me just edit this blueprint and make a kind of a bridge. So I want to make this a bit more like the object you see in um, Zelda. So something like this. So this is an object that you can use to bridge two distances or use it as a ramp. Compile and save that. Save. Now, if you have a look at this, I'm going to uh, pick this up. It's not right. It shouldn't be moving on this axis. That's not how it works in Zelda. So in order to fix this, so it just kind of moves on the Z, 
We need to get rid of the X and Y. See how it moves up? That's not, whoops, <laughs> that's an odd view. Uh, we don't want it to move up like this and change its uh, rotation. So to fix this, it's quite easy. All we need to do is uh, break the link and we can split the struct pin, which gives us access to more um, of these variables. We only want to move it on the Z. So let's put in the Z and then we can do the same thing over here. And by moving it only on the Z, you will see that it moves around just like in Zelda, you can move it up and down and you can create a bridge. Before it was pretty much impossible to create a bridge. So if you have a look here, uh, right click, it's not big enough, hold on. That's, ah, uh, it's moving away. I should have made it a cube. Okay, here we go. Stay still. Okay, good. Let's try this again. There we go. We made a, a ramp. And that's because we changed the uh, physics. Now, the other thing you may note is that, well, it doesn't feel right. Like, it's so snappy, it doesn't feel like it has weight. That is one of the easiest things to do in this entire tutorial. So if we go to the physics handle, we can actually adjust how fast it moves or how slow it moves. I'm going to plug in some uh, default values I had before. So I recommend messing around with these, but this is what I was playing around with before. So, so we have a uh, 100, 400, 350, 800, and then 10. So interpolation speed is one of the main ones. Everything else is about the stiffness and dampening, but interpolation is how fast it moves around. So let's, let's compare and have a look. So let's go ahead. See how it has that nice, uh, delay and that weight to it. It is so much better. And I can actually, uh, pick this up from a distance and it just, it feels good to use now. Like it, it feels like a proper physics object, which is really nice. Uh, same thing for this ball over here, this boulder. So let's uh, get it in line. There we go. Everything is working extremely well. The only thing I want to modify and show off is if we were to grab a cube. Let's actually just uh, grab one of these and put this, yeah, like this. Here we go. So I want to show you a few uses of what we've developed. So I'm going to grab it. Now I move it in. I can't do anything. I can push that around and I want to get up there. So I, I can just align it, right click, and I made a ramp up. So it's that whole dynamic gameplay that uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild has. I can also create a scenario where I need to get across a distance. So something like this. And maybe it's a bit uh, higher. And maybe you just can't access it, right? So I'll put it somewhere like this. Let's hit play. I'm going to grab this, make a temporary ramp. I'm going to grab it again, bring it up and make another ramp. And that's awesome. I love this style of gameplay. I think it's great. And that's why I really enjoyed uh, Zelda. One other addition that I'd like to show everyone is how easy it is to create a material. So we're going to create a simple uh, function. Let's create a new function, set physics, uh, whoops, physics, object, material. And before we actually do this, we just need to go ahead and make the material. So let's go into materials. Let's create a new material. Uh, Matt underscore missive yellow. Let's plug in a uh, vector three, constant vector three. 
Let's get a constant, which is a number, and let's get a multiply node. Plug that into the top, plug that into the bottom, plug that into a missive. We're timesing the color by an amount, which will be how strong it's going to be. So if you see over here in the preview, if I set this to like 25, it's got that nice emissive quality. So now that we have the emissive yellow, uh, we can balance between the emissive yellow and the matte white. So if we were to create a switch on int, and then on the input, we were to get the uh, change color as an integer, we could simply go uh, zero would be, just grab the uh, physics object. We could say, all right, well, if we type in zero, we're gonna set the material and we're going to set it to the emissive yellow. So emissive yellow. If we were to get one, we're just gonna set it to the matte underscore white. And we just plug this into selection. So what happens is if we type in zero, it goes to yellow, one, it goes to white. And you can just add heaps of pins, which is really useful. Uh, to use this, we can go to here and we can just grab the set, the object, plug this in here and maybe just move these forward to keep it a bit cleaner. Zero is what we want. It's the yellow. We can go down here, uh, set physics object. And before we do this, let's just uh, make sure it goes yellow. So I press uh, shift, left click, goes yellow, it stays yellow. If I was, if I was to type in one, uh, plug this in here, plug that in there. I like to keep these things neat. <laughs> there we go. So now it's one and that's a zero. It will go between. So pick it up, drop it, pick it up, drop it. And now you can go ahead and make some fancy uh, shaders if you like. Whoa. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty funny. You could actually um, make it so like if it hits you at a fast speed, your character ragdolls. So it could be a bit more like Zelda, which is pretty cool. Whoops. Uh, let's pick this up. There we go. And if you want, it's like a seesaw puzzle. Uh, if you want to get rid of all the debugging stuff, we can simply get rid of these and just plug it straight in and minimize the space a bit. We can get rid of the uh, draw debug to none. And I believe that's it. That's the, oh, and um, I'm just going to bring these back in. This looks a bit weird. And I'm just gonna take this over here. Let me build the lighting and that's it. This is the uh, physics mechanic, the Magnesis Rune. It's quite easy to make in Unreal and you can play around with this and change the properties. Looks like I forgot to adjust uh, one of the debug logs. So let's just check out where that is. Ah, here it is, delete these. And perfect. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned quite a bit from it. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe for similar content. Leaving a like is always appreciated and feel free to comment below uh, what you'd like to see in the next video. If you do feel like supporting me, I have a uh, Ko-fi link or a coffee link. Basically you can donate like $3 on it and it buys me a coffee. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all had a great Christmas and a great new year, and I'm excited for what 2018 is going to bring. So yeah, thank you all so much again, and I will see you all in the next video.